This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our new sponsor, Compliant Packaging, one of the top providers around of child-resistant packaging for the legal marijuana industry. Compliant Packaging's mission is to provide the legal cannabis industry with thoughtfully designed packaging that keeps marijuana out of the hands of children. If you have a legal marijuana business that needs brilliant marijuana packaging, then Compliant Packaging is there for you. They have all kinds of smart solutions available from glass jars and pharmaceutical vials to mylar bags and metal tins. In fact, there may be no better example of Compliant Packaging's laser sharp focus on smart design then their proprietary lock tin containers, which features five different size metal round tins that have a super smart twisting top that can be opened by adults, even those living with conditions like arthritis, but not by kids. Lock tins come in five sizes, ranging from something you could easily slip into your back pocket all the way up to their largest tin, which is capable of holding an ounce of flour. If you have a legal cannabis product that needs a great packaging, then you need to check out the lock tin and all the other great packaging options available from Compliant Packaging, all of which can be printed with your logos and branding. To learn more about Compliant Packaging, open up ComplientPackaging.com. To check out their Lock Tin lines, just swing over to LockTins.com, which is spelled L-O-C-T-I-N-S. That's ComplientPackaging.com and LockTins.com. Thanks to everyone at Compliant Packaging for supporting today's news. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Friday, November 9th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 610 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story this fine Friday is an update on the long simmering storyline of Massachusetts rolling out legal adult use sales. We've been all over this one in recent weeks as the state has now given license to commence operations to a pair of testing labs. And as the AP is now reporting, we're just days away from the Bay State's first adult use marijuana dispensary opening its doors. The New England Treatment Access Shop in Northampton, Massachusetts, is racing to be the first adult use shop open both in the state and on the East Coast, with fellow adult use dispensary Cultivate in Leicester also in the running. Keep your eyes open on this one. Given how many people live within a reasonable drive of its borders, adult use legalization in Massachusetts is going to have a political and social impact on a larger order of magnitude than states like the much more geographically isolated Colorado. Speaking of the Mile High State, the Colorado Sun has a fantastic story of taking a longer form look at how Colorado Governor-elect Jared Polis used smart technology to target potential voters in his state who care about marijuana legalization. It's interesting how the Polis campaign was able to create such targeted and effective messaging, but I think the real story here is the continuing emerging power of voters who care about marijuana issues. The Sun was given a campaign memo that outlined their strategy for going after voters who care about cannabis, which were acknowledged as a constituency usually ignored by political campaigns, but not the Polis campaign. Not only did they tap state databases of industry workers, but they also staged voter registration drives at dispensaries and hired a marijuana outreach director. This is a great story to read in full. Swing over to Colorado Sun for the full dive in. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Wrapping up our top stories for the week brings us out to sunny California, specifically the sprawling city of Los Angeles, where city officials announced an agreement with the state over how local marijuana businesses will be licensed. There has been a bit of a holdup for L.A. marijuana businesses, which will be cleared up under the newly announced plan that will give around 600 applicants that filed in August and September a license by the end of the year, which will allow them to get fully sanctioned by the state. It's a bit of a convoluted storyline, so if it grabs your attention today, I'd add it to your list of stories to read in full. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. 
Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our new sponsor, Compliant Packaging, one of the top providers around of child-resistant packaging for the legal marijuana industry. We're excited to have Compliant Packaging come on as a new sponsor because of their mission to keep cannabis out of the hands of children, which is something I think we can all agree is a pretty good idea. The folks over at Compliant Packaging understand that their job is to help their legal marijuana business customers elevate their own brands, which is why their packaging products products can be so easily printed and branded with your own logos and graphics. And if you're worried about being compliant with state laws, then you can check that concern at the door when you work with compliant packaging because they make sure that everything they sell can be used in any U.S. market. For instance, their locked-ins line have all the right government certifications and is legally compliant in every single state in the U.S., leaving you free to focus on all the other important things on your business radar. And that's really what Compliant Packaging aims to provide, a more worry-free experience for their customers. You should be spending your time on making your customers happy with better products, not troubling over details that Compliant Packaging has already figured out for you. If you want to learn more about all the different packaging solutions available, just open up compliantpackaging.com to see their Lock Tins line. Swing over to locktins.com, which is spelled L-O-C-T-I-N-S. That's compliantpackaging.com and locktins.com. Big thanks to Compliant Packaging for helping make today's news possible. All right, time for the Blitz. In the wake of the citizens of Michigan voting to legalize adult use marijuana this week, the state's U.S. attorneys have released a statement on how their offices will handle the disconnect between the new state laws and how the feds continue to categorize cannabis. You can swing over to click on Detroit to read the statement in full, but basically U.S. attorneys Matthew Schneider and Andrew Burge said they can't offer blanket immunity to federal law to anyone, which is pretty similar to what other U.S. attorneys in states like Colorado have said. Again, a good one to read in full. Marijuana Business Daily takes a nice look at how marijuana ballot measures fared locally in California, where 94 cannabis initiatives in all went up for a vote. As Marijuana Business Daily is reporting, just 15 of those 94 were voted down on Tuesday. Most of those that were approved had something to do with tax rates and business licensing. Keeping our heads in California, we have the city of San Francisco passing on Tuesday a ballot measure to tax legal marijuana businesses. The city estimates that it will pull in around $10 million a year in taxes now that Proposition D passed with 66% of the vote. Polly Washburn over at Marijuana Moment cranked through a bunch of post-election results to pull together numbers for how various marijuana-related measures fared on Tuesday compared to different politicians. As her math has it, legal marijuana ballot measures grabbed more votes on a purely numeric basis than did an assortment of politicians. This one is rich in detail and numbers, and I'd make sure to open up in full. A marijuana company in Germany has filed claim in Canadian courts against two of the country's licensed marijuana providers, which are being accused of not delivering as much wholesale medical cannabis as they were contracted to provide. German company Canna Medical Pharma is seeking $16.6 million in damages from Aurora Cannabis and Med Relief for failing to deliver the more than 200 pounds of marijuana they said they would supply for the German market. The case will kick off in court in the middle of next month. Our final top two stories this week are fittingly headlines about results from Tuesday's big midterm elections. Starting off, this two-story train brings us down to Florida, where rising sea temperatures have yet to swallow up the entire state and where Democratic candidate Nikki Freed is ahead in the vote count over her Republican opponent. It's a close race, but the latest results have Ms. Freed ahead by just under 3,000 votes. Regular listeners should remember this storyline from earlier this year where the Freed campaign lost their bank account because it's supported by the legal marijuana industry. State law requires a recount if the margin between two candidates is less than 0.5 percent. So we'll probably watch how this all shakes out as the final votes are tallied. Finishing up the week, we wrap in Michigan, where Democrat Dana Nessel has been elected as the state's new attorney general. Ms. Nessel is a vocal proponent of legal marijuana and is generally seen as an ally by Michigan industry watchers. Nice work, Michigan. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again Monday morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. 
But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all of the news we cover. Just a quick reminder, we're going to be in Las Vegas next week for our big annual convention adventures. So our publishing schedule on the daily is going to be a little more disrupted than usual. To be totally honest, I don't really get much sleep out in Vegas, mostly because of my early rising late Vegas nights and the time zone difference between there and Maine. So I'm making no promises as to what time the show will be actually up each day, only that it will be up each day. Thanks to our sponsor, Compliant Packaging, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.